But let me give you some examples of some bread and butter items that add up to help you make your mortgage or help you pay your electric bill. Hey, Bolo Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, in this video, we are gonna talk about my bread and butter bolos, items that I picked up cheap and I sold for $35 or less. I'm gonna tell you where I got it, what I paid for it, and what it sold for. So the truth about reselling, in my opinion is, is that you can sell pretty much anything as long as it follows the rules of the platform. Now, does that mean that it has to be a huge big money bolo? No, all of those little sales add up. And the Rebel reseller uh, once talked about paying her mortgage with her plush sales. And it really just got me thinking. It's like, these are her bread and butter sales and it's paying her mortgage. So a lot of you pass up the bread and butter. I'm gonna say to you, yes, it's better to find the big money stuff, but let me give you some examples of some bread and butter items that add up to help you make your mortgage or help you pay your electric bill. It all adds up, guys. Now, do I wish that every item I found was huge money? Absolutely. But look at this, for example. This is a PJ Masks um, Romeo's Flying Factory Lab playset replacement part. I picked this up at the Goodwill, Goodwill Benz by weight probably had maybe 25 cents in it. I knew that it was a replacement part for a toy. I knew it was probably harder to find. It would probably sit for a little while, but I knew somebody would come along and need this item and they would buy it. I sold this for $8.68 and the buyer paid shipping. So with tax and shipping, they were all in for $16.61 for this item. Did I make a huge profit? I probably, after fees and everything, what, made seven bucks? Six at the least? That's pretty good money for the amount of time it took me to get this item, take a picture of it, and list it on eBay. Very, very simple to do. Now, again, of course, I'd rather sell a $25 item or a $100 item, but it all adds up. So keep in mind that it's not always about finding the biggest and the best. Fill your store with bread and butter to get people to come in and just keep listing. <laughs> I'm laughing because I have to tell myself that. Keep listing, keep listing. I'm doing a lot over on Whatnot right now. You guys probably know that. I've talked about it. Um, it's a full-time job over there, but I am still listing on eBay. So I'm going to share with you some more of my sales. This is a chosen purple plush Easter bunny rabbit stuffed animal jelly bean ears. Look at this little cutie. It did have some staining on the ears. You can see it's got a little hole. Just take close ups, guys. Just show them. There was somebody, um, I believe it's in one of the comments of my YouTube channel. They're like, I have a plush and it has, um, I forget if they said it had stains or holes. All right, so ideally we would like to pick things up that are in excellent condition. But if you get an item that is desirable, it is retired, it is vintage, it is hard to find, you absolutely can tell, sell that item with defects, but you need to definitely disclose everything. Um, I got this, this came out of a uh, Donna lot, Donna Talabatolino over on YouTube. She used to do big plush lots and she would sell you a big bag of plush for $50. And that was with free shipping. And the Rebel Reseller and I, who I mentioned earlier, we did a challenge where we each bought a bundle and you guys can check that out on the channel. It was super fun. And we unbagged it and we compared um, who we thought got the better, uh, better plush lot. But this was one of my items. So it did take a little while to sell and it sold for $29 and the buyer paid shipping. The next item is this vintage real fur sleeping kitty kitten cat calico realistic looking dollhouse. Now, realistic, absolutely. Dollhouse, it's very small. Both are good keywords. Now, this is kind of big for a dollhouse. What was it? Like four inches? Let's see. Yeah, about four inches. But it's still not a big toy. I sold this for a best offer of $25 and I got it for $1 at an estate sale. So 
This was a long tail item, but cost of goods, a dollar into 25, I'll take that all day long. This thing takes up no space. I list it and I forget it. Now, if I was more aggressive with marking things down, I do run sales, but you know, consistently like relisting a lot of people, they do it weekly. They will, uh, and monthly they'll end certain items, maybe certain weeks and then relist. Is it important? Yeah, I think it can help. Do I do it? No, I don't have time. So I just don't. Every once in a while, I'll get like an urge and I'll do some, but no, I don't do it on a regular basis. This one you might recognize if you saw my video. Um, I bought a bunch of vintage, really funky, cool items from Catfield and Thrifty on Whatnot. She was having a Whatnot show and she was starting, I think, items at 2 or $3. And they were really cool vintage items like this. Never seen anything like this before. It's a little address book. And I paid $2.15 for this. And I sold it for $24.80 and the buyer paid shipping. Is that not super cool? But if you want to see what else I got, oh my goodness, I got the funniest thing from her. And I'm still waiting to sell it. I priced it high and I'm waiting on the right buyer. But it is so funny. So go check out that video um, and check out Cat Feel and Thrifty on Whatnot. Um, if you guys are not on whatnot, you can use my referral link down below to get $15 to shop. You absolutely 100% can source on whatnot. Uh, you just have to look around and find people that sell things at the right price for you to make a profit and the things that you like to sell. But yeah, I thought this was super fun. It was a really fun video. You guys got to see it. This is a Mary Meyer Taggy's Bunny 6-inch Baby Teether Rattle Teething Ring. And a lot of times I just throw these into the washing machine. Now the thrift stores, they do um, sanitize things. They are required to do that, but you can also machine wash. It'll usually tell you on the tag. And that's what I did with this one, if I remember correctly. Um, especially like baby toys, you know, anything like that. It's real easy to just wash them. And this one I sold for $10 and 40 cents and the buyer paid shipping. And I picked this up at the Goodwill bins. Isn't it cute? These, oh my goodness. I love this. I thought this was going to sell fast because I just thought these were really, really cool. However, I did, um, I did list it on the high end. I got these at a garage sale for 25 cents. So what I think is cool about these is that they're vintage and people that make clothing, they can put these little tags on the inside of the clothes. Isn't that adorable? Oh my goodness. I love it. So this one here, I paid 25 cents at a garage sale. It took a best offer of 15 plus shipping. And also I would like to note that it was opened and there were only six out of seven in the package. This took forever to sell. Would I pick this up again? No, no. But here is what I want to tell you about this and why I'm going to bring this up and show you this listing, even though it took years to sell, probably two or three years. Um, it's just a silly little, like, reminds me of something you'd get at the dollar store. But it's Imperial. It's from 1987. It's vintage. Uh, I paid a dollar for it, I believe, at a garage sale. And I got two or three of them. This one just sold for $14.29 and the buyer paid shipping. And again, I have had this listed for probably a couple years at least. But the funny thing is I sold another one in the same month. It was, I think, within a couple weeks. So random that they both sold around the same time frame. You know, it makes me wonder about the algorithm and how the algorithm works. But it also is another, a lot of resellers say, okay, I'm going through my inventory and I am going to get rid of anything that hasn't sold in six months. So if you have a space issue, yes, okay, I can understand doing that. But if you don't, these, I, most items will eventually sell. So I always say list it and forget it. Do I, I don't know if that's the best advice, but that's what I do. And it happens all the time. I will sell something that has been listed for two years and I'm like, ah, that finally sold. And I'm, that's money in my pocket. I made what 12 bucks profit on that. I'm happy with that. It wasn't hurting me sitting in that tote waiting to sell. 
made no difference to me at all. I just didn't even think about it. And I think the more you list, um, the more items you have in your store, the less you think about how long it's taking for an item to sell. If you only have 50 items and nothing's selling, you're like, why isn't anything selling? So just play Disney Princess Bean plush Snow White mini dwarf stuffed toy. This is just a little itty bitty four inch stuffed animal. I got this at the Goodwill Bins, so probably had about a quarter in it. And I sold it for $7.44 plus shipping. So this would be an example of, you know, a $10 or less bread and butter item that sold that, you know, you make five or six bucks. Is it big money? No, but you can buy yourself a coffee, right? It's five, six bucks you didn't have. Uh, this is a Kinex and this is another bread and butter. It is a replacement part. Many of you will not waste your time and that is fine. Um, but I like bringing these things out of the landfill and into people's homes when they need them. You know, they're looking for it. These items, they're getting tossed and people want them. I got this at the Goodwill Bins again, probably a quarter, sold it for $9.30 in the buyer paid shipping. This is a Peeps Just Born Plush Bunny Rabbit Easter toy, stuffed animal. Garage sale, 50 cents, sold it for $12.40 plus shipping. This is a vintage apron. This is another item. I think I got it at a garage sale and a bunch with a bunch of other aprons. Some of them sold very quickly. Some of them took a long time to sell. This one took a long time to sell. Now, I think I could have probably had better keywords, uh, but it's just an apron, a sheer apron. Super cute, very vintage. Um, maybe I got it in an estate sale. It could have been in an estate sale, but I sold it for 10. I took a best offer of 10. I just, somebody made the offer and I'm like, I'm just going to move it. And all right. So I actually have two of these available. Buy one, get one 25% off with code BOLO coupon. So if people add items to their cart from my store and put BOLO coupon into the coupon area, they're going to get 25% off. I do have a video that teaches you how to create a coupon like this. It also shows you how to send coupons out to past buyers and people that follow your store. That is another thing that I should do more frequently that I don't do. This is always here, but uh, if you're not using coupons, definitely look up that video, Bolo Buddies, how to create a coupon or Bolo Buddies coupon should pull it up on YouTube. Uh, but I have two sets of these. Uh, one of them I got at a garage sale. Uh, for 50 cents. We'll just say this one. And these have a mag, they're magnetic and it makes them kiss. <laughs> but I have another set available. They're super cute. They're by Hallmark. Sold it for $13.64 in the buyer paid shipping. So 50 cents, you know, I made about 10 bucks on it. To me, I, I, I'm good with that. This is a jelly cat and jelly cat plush. This one here, I sold for $32 plus shipping. I got it at a garage sale for a dollar. Jelly Cat is a brand that I almost always pick up no matter what. They range from bread and butter to big money. If you want to see the big money Jelly Cat, I do have a video on it. Type in Bolo Buddies Jelly Cat into the YouTube search and get ready to see some bolos. Uh, vintage Easter plush duck duckling yellow. So it's a duck. Uh, I got it. I don't know where I got it. This one's been listed a while, so I did not write it down but I sold it for $14.29 and the buyer paid shipping. Here is an animal adventure puppy. And I sold this one for $14 plus shipping and I got this one free. And I believe this came from the lot that um, a viewer reached out to me and offered me a bunch of plush. She said, just come get it. I want to get rid of it. And I went and got it and we chatted for the longest time and we have become really great friends. She is a super sweet human being. I just adore her. And um, she is now getting her eBay store uh, up and running with plush. So she has a whole storage unit full, but she wanted to get rid of some of it at that time. So I was her, I was her girl and I've made a great friendship out of it. So uh, I got this one free and sold it for 14 plus shipping. The next item is the stackable building blocks rattle toys. I got these. I don't remember where I got these, but they are interesting. I've never seen blocks like these. Might have been a thrift store or garage sale. Uh, sold them for $10 plus shipping. Probably had a buck or two in them. Here is the other one. Yeah, just so random that they sold in the same like time frame. 
Uh, this one, I took a best offer of $8.88 and the buyer paid shipping and they did not go to the same buyer. Crazy, right? Here is a vintage Cuddlewit Easter Bunny Rabbit uh, with jelly bean print. Right here are the little ears. And I got this at the Goodwill Bins, sold it for $24.80 and the buyer paid shipping. I love picking up little bunnies. They always seem to sell, you know, with Easter and all, you know, a lot of people want bunnies for baskets and things like that. And they're looking for the vintage ones. This is a Disney store sloth. I got this for a dollar at a garage sale and I sold it for $15.50 and the buyer paid shipping. So I would love your feedback on how you feel about items that sell for $10 or less. Do you mess with it? Do you think it's worth it? Has what I've said to you in this video changed your mind at all? Um, Yes, you could be listing things that are worth more money. Most definitely. I'm one of those where I like to challenge myself and I'm like, I want to see if I can sell that replacement part. I like it. It's a challenge. It's fun. Sometimes it's just about listing things you like. So your job doesn't feel like a job. Does anybody understand that? I, I just, I love my job and I still love eBay. I know, I know I'm on whatnot and I'm like a machine over there and I'm loving it, but I love hanging out with you guys and digging through the jewelry and showing it and just selling it. It's so fun, but we get to talk in the chat. It's entertaining. And um, I don't know. I just hope you guys will come over and hang out. Even if you don't buy anything on whatnot, just come to a show and hang out. So uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. I do have all my referral and affiliate links down below. Those do help me keep the channel running. I do earn commissions on most of those or money to shop. And you guys, in most cases, get a discount. So check it out. Most of the information's written down there for you. Like whatnot, you get $15 to shop. So that's cool. You get free money. You can buy something to resell, right? So check them out. And thank you again. I appreciate you all. And I will see you at the next one. Thanks for watching.